Good morning, Sun Devil Learning Lab students, and welcome back to another great day of learning. I am so excited to have you guys back here. I am seeing some familiar faces as well as some new ones. Hello, how are you guys? Um, for those of you who do not know me, or maybe you've forgotten who I am, that's totally okay. Um, my name is Miss Wendy. I work on the third grade ELA team alongside Miss Martinez. Um, me and Miss Martinez, we do videos together sometimes during the week. We'll do videos separately. Uh, this video is just going to be me for the day, but I'm sure we will have another video with Miss Martinez very soon. Um, for those of you who just need a little bit of background about the Sun Devil Learning Lab, it was created in response to the current coronavirus. Um, since they did shut down schools, we didn't want you guys to feel like you're education was being stopped so we created the sun devil learning lab in march and we've been just continuing it throughout the school year it went really well so we decided to extend it into the summer which is where you guys are watching it and we're very excited that you guys have chosen to continue your education with us thank you so much for tuning in it means a lot to us uh sun devil learning lab is such a great team to work with and teach with and i'm very grateful for them very grateful for my team and I'm grateful for all you guys that you guys are tuning in to watch this with us. Thank you so much. So with that being said, we are going to get started with our lesson today, which is on, this one is actually really fun because it is gonna involve us creating our own little game. So we're gonna be making a reading comprehension dice game. Today is going to be fiction. Um, I'm going to make another video tomorrow on nonfiction. So if you guys want to, watch the nonfiction dice game as well, create both of them. Make sure to tune into that video, it'll be coming up shortly. But right now we are going to be just fo focusing, there it is, on the fiction dice game. And I'm gonna go into what that is in a little bit. Okay. So our goal for the day, or our I can statement, is I can ask and answer questions about fiction stories. Now, as you guys have noticed, I've made quite a few videos on asking and answering questions just because I feel like it is such an important part of reading. And I want to make sure that you guys not only have one way, like one strategy of asking and answering questions, I want to make sure you guys have numerous strategies, some that are even fun and interactive dice games like today. So our schedule for the day is first, we are going to start by reviewing, asking and answering questions. Should be easy. Like I said, we've gone over this a few times. Um, and then we are going to create our dice game, and then we are going to have a read aloud. So, let's do a quick review. Start with the very basic. Guys, what in the world are questions? I know that we ask a million billion questions a day, but can anyone tell me what questions are? Yep, so questions are something that we ask. We use questions to gain knowledge of the world around us by asking things. Think about it. When you meet someone for the first time, do you just stare at them and say absolutely nothing and observe all of their information? No, that's crazy. Instead, think about it. a new classmate comes to your class. What's usually the first thing you ask them? You usually ask them, what's, what's your name? Where are you from? What do you like to do? we're gaining information by asking those questions. Otherwise, I wouldn't know how we got that information. So, another quick review is, what are the key words for questions? We definitely went over this. There are five W's and an H. Who can remind me what they are? I'm sure we all can, let's all say them together. So we have who, what, when, where, why, and so those are five W's. What's the other one? And how. Good job, guys. So anytime we see those questions, or excuse me, those words at the beginning, we can kind of start to assume that most likely they're asking us a question. Okay, and then this is a really important question that if you want to pause the video and talk to your fellow students around you feel free to but how does asking and answering questions about a text make us a better reader so if you want to pause the video have a quick discussion go right ahead otherwise i'm gonna open the floor back up 
to myself. So in my personal opinion, um, asking and answering questions makes us a better reader because like I said about asking questions, we are learning information that we did not otherwise have. Say I read a passage, I read the whole thing, and then I had to sit there and realize, huh, I did not understand a single thing that I read. Who's been there? I know I for sure have. If I had taken the time to slow down and ask and answer questions throughout the text, I probably would have gotten a better understanding on the text that I was reading. So if I had stopped after page one and said, okay, what did I just read? If I had stopped after page two and said, okay, who is this about? Who is the main character? What is going on in the story? I feel that I would have had a better understanding than just breezing through it and not asking myself any questions. So short little recap, asking and answering questions. It helps you not only get information from reading, but it helps you make sure that you are understanding what you are reading. And that's why it is important and it makes us a better reader because we are making sure that we are comprehending big, big topic in third grade, comprehension. We're making sure we are comprehending and understanding what we are reading. So now it is time for the dice game. You guys crushed it on the review. Good job. So what you guys are going to need for this is you are going to need a piece of paper, um, some pencils or some markers. If you want to make it colorful, go for it. The world is your oyster. Make it as colorful as you want. And a six-sided dice. I want you guys to get that while I get mine. Okay. So basically the whole point of this dice game is you are going to create six questions for the six-sided dice um, about the fictional text that you just read. So let's go on to it. What are some questions for fiction that we can think of? Let's think back to those question keywords that we have, which are who, what, when, where, why, and how. Good job. So let's go back and think, what are some questions that we can ask for fictional text? Hmm. You guys want to turn and talk to your partner, pause the video, you can feel more than free to. Um, I'll just go over some of my questions I thought of right off the bat. Um, some questions you can ask are who is the main character? You know, sequencing questions, what happened in the beginning, what happened in the middle, what happened in the end? Um, what is the setting? What is the conflict? Basically, any question that uses those who, what, when, where, why, how is totally a question that we can use for fiction. I will actually share. I made my fiction dice already. Ugh. I made my fiction dice game already. So if you guys need some ideas for questions that you can ask, um, Feel free to take mine. As always, you know, I prefer if you use your own questions, but if you need some inspiration, feel free to use mine. Um, so for mine, I have that my first question. So if I roll a one, so let me explain the game real quick. I, I'm pretty sure you guys understand it, but just in case it's a little confusing. So what you're going to do is after you read a story, you guys are going to grab a six-sided dice, you are going to roll a number, and whatever number you roll is going to be the question that you and your partner, you and your team discuss. So, for example, this one. So I have the first one, if I roll a one, I'm going to talk about who is the main character. Now let's say I roll a one again. So let's say I'm playing for the first time and I roll a one, and then I play again and I roll a one right after. So am I gonna just ask who is the main character again? Yes, I'm gonna answer who is the main character, but if I roll the same number again, I wanna give more of a description. So say I'm reading Little Red Riding Hood. I roll a one. Okay, who's the main character? Little Red Riding Hood. Say I roll a one again. Who is the main character? I would maybe wanna describe her this time. I would say, oh, the main character is Little Red Riding Hood and she is adventurous because she went in the woods alone to go to her grandma's house, okay? So yes, I'm still answering the main question of who is the main character, but I'm also giving her a description. I'm going further into detail than I did last time, okay? So that was, number one is who is the main character? 
Um, what do I have for number two? For number two, I put what happened in the book, aka give me a summary of what happened in the book. Um, number three, I put when and where does the book take place? That's also known as the what, guys? The setting. Good job. So when I roll a three, I'm going to be talking about the setting. Um, for number four, I put what was the problem or the solu slash solution of the story? Um, for number five, I really like my number five question. Um, it's how can I connect this to myself, to the world, or to another text? I'm a really big believer that finding text to self, text to world, text to text connections help us connect with a book, help us enjoy it more. Um, if we're able to connect it to either a story we already know in our real life, maybe something similar happened to us. Um, maybe another book that we read. I feel like it's really important to connect books to something greater than the book itself. So that's one of my favorite questions. Um, and then number six, I just did how would I review this book? Um, like I said, opinions are very important to me. So I want to give, you know, my honest opinion on a book. And plus, that's just a fun question. Like, as we all know, we love being able to talk about ourselves. We love being able to talk about our opinions. So I thought I would just give you guys time to talk about your opinion on the book on this dice game. And like I said, your guys' questions do not have to be exactly the same as mine. If you want to steal some of mine, that's totally fine. Go for it. But I would prefer your own original questions being that we're focusing on asking and answering questions. So I want to make sure that you guys get the opportunity to ask the questions that you're interested with. So if you guys want to, I will, this will also be in your learning guide, the one that I made. Um, I will leave this in view. If you guys want to pause the video and think of some fiction dice game questions. Okay. So thankfully you guys had time to pause the video and hopefully you have made your fictional dice game by now. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to have a read aloud. I'm going to read a fictional book that we read in one of my classes that I just loved. Um, and at the end of this, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to pair off and I want you to play a fun round of the dice game. And I'll be playing, I'll be playing a little mini round. I won't be I won't be going through the whole thing with you guys, but I'll play like a, I'll play a little round. <laughs> All right, so this book is by Megan McDonald, and it's called Beetle McCready Eats Bugs. Here we have Beetle's Tips for Eating Bugs. Please don't eat bugs. Beetle McCready had a taste for adventure. She wanted to brave bears like Laura Ingalls Wilder. She wanted to sail oceans like Marco Polo. She wanted to zoom through the sky like Amelia Earhart. She dreamed of being a real explorer, a true pioneer. Then came fun with food week in Mr. Wrigley's science class and the ant. Bum, bum, bum. On Monday, table six made a food pyramid. Lacey cut out magazine pictures of artichokes. Roger drew cheese. Mona glued oatmeal cookies under cereals and stuck a juice box next to fruit. Beetle found a hot dog, a hamburger, and an ant. An ant! She could be a real explorer, a true pioneer. She, Beetle McCready, would start her very own food group. Food group number six, bugs. Beetle reached to paste the ant at the top of the pyramid, but she dropped it. Ick! There's an ant on my artichoke, yelled Lacey. Ew, said Roger. A bug is not a food, said Mona. It says here, people in Australia and Argentina eat ants for protein, Beetle said. I bet they even eat ants as far away as Antarctica. <laughs> Does it say in there to stay away from Antarctica, asked Mona. I would eat an ant in, eat an, ant in a second, said Beetle. Prove it, said Lacey. Prove it, said Roger. Uh-oh, said Mona. Time to play Antarctica, Lacey yelled on the playground. I'll find the ant, said Roger, ca crawling through the grass. I can't watch, said Mona. She put on her sunglasses. 
Pioneers ate bo boiled locusts. Explorers ate worms. Even Laura Ingalls Wilder ate cricket pie. But suddenly, Beetle McCready did not feel like a brave explorer. She did not feel like a daring pioneer. I'm not hungry, Beetle blurted. I already had lunch. Dare double dare, said Roger. Not today, Beetle told them. Tomorrow. At 1.07 p.m. on Tuesday, she, Beetle McCready, would eat an ant. Would you guys ever eat an ant? I don't think I would. Beetle practiced her ant eating on potato chips. Crunch. She practiced on raisins. Squish. But potato chips did not crawl. And raisins did not have legs. The next day, at recess, Lacey was first to catch an honest-to-goodness member of food group number six. Beetle took the ant. She closed her eyes. She, Beetle McCready, set the itchy, twitchy, bugly, wuggly ant on the tip of her tongue. The ant was tickly. The ant was creepy. The ant was crawly. If she ate the ant, she would be a real explorer, a true pioneer. Beetle A for Anteater McCready. All she had to do was swallow one teeny tiny gulp. Blah! Beetle spit out the ant. Beetle can eat an ant. Beetle can eat an ant. Lacey and Roger chanted. She, Beetle McCready, was not an explorer. She was not a pioneer. She was not even Beetle, A for Anteater McCready. Don't feel bad, said Mona. Who would want to be best friends with an anteater? Fun with food week was not so fun anymore. On Wednesday, Beetle's whole class made up a recipe for rattlesnake stew. Except Beetle. Mr. Wrigley told them about a 2,000 pound popcorn ball. Beetle did not even raise an eyebrow. And when table six conducted an experiment on bubble gum, Beetle just chewed on her pencil. Beetle, don't you wanna chew gum in class or in school? Asked Mona. Shh, said Beetle. I'm writing a poem. It's called The Ant Not Eaten. Oh no, you're still thinking about that ant? I want to be brave, said Beetle. I'm about as brave as a mealworm. A mealworm is not an explorer. A mealworm is not a pioneer. On Thursday, Mr. Wrigley announced, today we're going to explore new foods. Beetle explored a chickpea sandwich named falafel. Roger called it awful awful. She ate the food of pilgrims, corn with lima beans. Succotash gives you a rash, said Lacey. Beetle even tasted Japanese fish eggs and Chinese bird's, Chinese bird's nest soup. Fish eggs smell like an art project, said Mona, and bird's nest looks like cow hair, she put on her sunglasses. Mr. Wrigley says people risk their lives to get the nest from caves, said Beetle. Mr. Wrigley says they're made of spit, said Mona. It was no use. Falafel was not an ant. Succotash was not an ant. And bird's nest soup, soup did not make her Marco Polo. Bird's nest soup just made her a spit eater. Finally, it was Friday. A special visitor came to class. Second grade, said Mr. Wrigley, say hello to Chef Suzanne from the famous restaurant Chez Chanel, I think. Chef Suzanne unpacked dish after delicious smell smelling dish. Pork rinds? Pine nuts? What's under those lids? Beetle whispered. Ta-da! Chef Suzanne uncovered the first plate. All the bugs you can eat. She picked up a toasted cricket, popped it in her mouth, crunch, and ate it. Glug. The class buzzed like bees. Gross! Yuck! Sicko! Today, we have Chinese chop suey ants, said Chef Suzanne. Mexican stink bee salsa, cricket pizza from Brazil, even super crunch chocolate chip cookie. Beetle eyed the stink bugs. The smelliest of all smelly. Tree worm spaghetti, the squirmiest of all squirmies. Grasshopper tacos, the bugliest, but something smelled good like bacon frying, like sweet scrambled eggs. Beetle picked up a black witch moth caterpillar. Beetle dangled the fried caterpillar in front of her nose. She set the caterpillar on her tongue. She rolled it around in her mouth. 
It was the awfulest of all awful, the cow hairest of all cow hair, worse than spit. Pilots had to eat caterpillars when their planes crashed. Beetle closed her eyes. She was Amelia Earhart on a desert island. Crunch, crunch, glug. Beetle McCrady's eyes rolled up. Her tongue lolled out. Beetle McCrady full up to the floor. Kidding! Beetle jumped up with a smile. Caterpillars taste like corn chips. Munch. Snake bugs taste like apples. Crunch. Crickets taste like nuts. Ew! There's a cricket leg stuck in your tooth, said Lacey. Gross! Bug butts and grub guts, yelled Roger. Can we still have cookies if we don't eat any bugs? asked Mona. Sure! Pass them around, said Chef Suzanne. Munch, crunch. The cookies were extra gooey, extra crunchy. It's the chips, said Mona. It's the nuts, said Roger. It's the mealworms, said Chef Suzanne. Roger ran for the bathroom. Lacey dashed for the trash can. Uh-oh, said Mona. Eating mealworms makes you brave, Beetle told her. She, told her. she showed her friend just how to dunk a mealworm cookie into caterpillar fungus tea. And that is the end of the story. Ugh, I don't know about you guys, would you guys ever eat a bug? I don't think I could. I, th I think I tried once. We had those, uh, cheddar, back in my hometown, we had those cheddar um, cricket things. I couldn't try it. My friend tried it. She said they actually weren't bad, but I just, I could never try it. So what we're going to do now is we are going to, I'm going to model a quick round of how to play the fiction dice game. Should be pretty easy. I'm pretty sure you guys know how to play it right now. Um, unfortunately, I do not have a six-sided dice, so I just pulled one up on my phone. All right, so I got a six. So we're gonna look on my thing. Hold down. How would I review the book? Hmm, how would I review the book? I would give Beetle McCready Eats Bugs a nine out of 10 because I really like the illustrations. I really like the, I like the moral of the story. It's all about being brave, being your own person, not caring what people think and trying new foods. But the thought of eating bugs is really gross to me. So that's why it's not a 10 out of 10, but I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 because I like the illustrations and I like the story itself. So let's do one more, and then I'm going to give you guys time to play this on your own. Okay, so for this one, I got a four. So four right here. Uh, what was the problem solution of the story? So the problem was that Beetle McCready wanted to be a famous explorer, and she thought that she could do that by eating adventurous food, like eating bugs. Um, but she got too scared to eat bugs. And then she felt like she wasn't an explorer. So then when Chef Suzanne came in with all those bugs, she realized that she could be brave and she could try bugs and be a famous explorer. So that is how you play the dice game. Pretty simple, easy work, especially if you pair off with a partner, then it allows you guys to have a little discussion. And I'm all for discussion when it comes to reading books. So with that, that concludes our lesson. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Um, have fun playing the dice game, and I will see you on the next video. We are going to make the nonfiction version of this. So this is the fiction one. Tune in next time to see the nonfiction dice game. Have a great day, guys. Bye.